everybody, it's Takar again, uh, out here in the sticks outside of Kaliningrad, about well, maybe 10 miles from the city centre. So today, we're going to be exploring one of the abandoned forts that are dotted around the city of Kaliningrad. Oh shit. Oh god. <coughs> Sorry mate. A uh, little incident there with a road bit of a road rage at a zebra crossing uh, wasn't focused enough but yeah uh, the city of Kaliningrad or Koenigsberg as it was once known as has loads of forts dotted around it from hundreds of years ago now some of these forts uh, have been turned into tourist attractions museums you can go visit them uh, pay an entry fee and so forth but a lot of them are derelict and abandoned and obviously they've been falling into severe disrepair. You can go and do whatever you want. Well, as long as there's no uh, security there and whatnot. But this one I'm going to now, I believe, is fort number eight. Or is it number seven? Let me just double check. Yeah, it's fort number eight. Uh, so... It's down here, somewhere, out in the sticks. The only problem is getting back is going to be a bit of an issue. Well, because it's like almost a 25 minute walk to get to this abandoned fort, but then you've got to go all the way back up here to catch that bus back into the city. Bus journey takes... 45 minutes to potentially an hour depending on the traffic so let's see how it goes well isn't this interesting so I come up to a road sign here that obviously tells you where the nearest towns are so the closest one is four kilometers north and then you've got two to the to the right five six kilometers each one to the left uh, eight kilometers if you keep going north you get to the nearest big town 34 kilometers and then you got moscow 1236 kilometers from this point to get to the capital all right so after circumnavigating an industrial estate avoiding the security i managed to make it to the fort and here it is in all its splendor so I believe this was constructed way back in the 1600s, maybe 1700s, who knows. But it has been derelict for years. Well, I know who frequents this place. God damn, imagine if that went through my shoe. Now, I don't know if you guys can see closely, but there are cameras here. There's one over there and there's one over there. I guess just to check on who's coming in and out and who's using this place. You know, it could be used by homeless people, drug addicts, people like that. And I mean, I did just uh, discover a nail, sorry, um, a needle on the floor. So, you know. All right, so I'm just stepping in here now. Be careful, rotten floorboarding. Uh, Korean man, whoever that is. Loads of, uh, loads of things here. I mean, there was a couple of guys back there, but they funny. So forth, it is pitch black in here. I cannot see a thing. I'm gonna have to switch to my light. Come on, man. fuck's sake, hurry up. It literally just took me a while to get this bloody light on, but it doesn't seem to be that powerful. I mean, I'm trying to get some freaking light in here. It doesn't seem to be anything. It doesn't seem to be that powerful. Let me switch the brightness all the way up on my phone.
right at the bottom of this pit of despair. And, uh, I believe we're entering. Yeah, I think to get into the actual side of the fall, you need to proper go down deep. And how long this crappy light on my phone is going to last, who knows? Uh, maybe there were people here. Maybe some homeless people, who knows? Be careful where you step. That was for maybe light signals. I'm not going down there. Hmm. I don't know where this leads. Jesus. Seems to be abandoned. But for who knows how long this pack was abandoned for. Oh man, wishing I bought a proper torch with me. Is that something out of Tomb Raider? Damn, no one has been here for a while. Over here, another section of the fort. Light is uh, not working very well. I should have bought my proper strobe light with me that's magnetized. And also you can attach it to cameras because that here would have been perfect. This is the other side of the fort. side. seem to be leaving so I spoke to those guys who were at the fort already and they told me that fort number eight is very small and there's not much to see or do there but up the road you've got nine and ten nine being the closest now according to maps it says it's going to take 57 minutes for me to walk all the way there because there are as you can see well, no bus stop well the nearest bus stop is 30 minutes that way so I reckon it'd be a lot quicker to walk. And to be honest, the way I walk, I'll get there in under an hour. I'll probably get there in about 35 minutes or so. So Fort Number Nine is supposed to be bigger and there's more to do. And you can actually get into the actual plaza of the fort. Oh, I'm well out in the sticks here. So, turns out, none of those buses from that bus stop are going to help me. One goes north, and the other one goes south. Complete opposite direction. Even if I was to get one of those buses, I'd still have probably about 25 plus minutes to walk to the fort. So from here, it's going to have to be on foot. But I hope it does not rain, because that will spoil my day. It was raining this morning. So you see, you got all these houses out here. And unfriendly dogs and long chains. Oh, here we are. We're coming up to the level crossing. So from here, it should be fairly smooth. So here at the level crossing, I hope that there is no train coming. Because if there was, I suppose it would make a noise from there. 
So if you take this route, it goes straight into Kaliningrad. South route goes directly south towards Poland and Dansk Elberg region. So yeah, we're not that far now. Well, to put it in layman's terms, no. So, almost at the fort, and what do I come across here? The most depressing Mickey and Minnie Mouse I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so what, there's like an amusement park down here or something? Uh, for my Russian viewers, please help me translate this. Uh, well, I ain't going down there, so I've got a job to do. I just came out of that supermarket over there feeling a bit peaky and low on energy, so thought I'd get myself something like a little pick-me-up, a little uh, solar power. See what it tastes like. It's not exactly Red Bull, but in a country under sanctions, beggars cannot be choosers. So I'm gonna fill me up. Ooh, it's berry flavor. That is um, a very strange flavor. almost kind of like medicine but I suppose this has got a load of caffeine inside it to keep me going so it's not all bad uh, solar power red for forest right problem with uh, crossing the road in this country is it's a bit of an Olympic sport in its own right you don't know whether people are coming or going left or right straight ahead backwards u-turn who knows you just kind of got to guess go with the flow but the good thing is we are not that far from number nine so it should be the next turning up here and a few side roads through this uh, little village and number nine is somewhere in there so if I go straight through this village here it will take me to fort number nine and from what you can see people are doing relatively well. So look, building houses, more houses, a lot of renovation work. So I suppose these, um, I suppose these are people's dachas. So for those of you that don't know, in the, it was a big thing in the Soviet Union. A dacha is what you had if you were part of the privileged few. And it's basically like your vacation home you'd have outside the city. You know, it's in the countryside somewhere, near a lake usually. And you'd go there for vacation and hosting uh, functions and things like that. <laughs> but in Russia, it's a big status symbol to have your own dacha. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a home from home, essentially. So I suppose if I go down here, and down there, it will take me to number nine. So, yep, yeah, uh, still going through this village. Oh, see, Soviet flag there. So yesterday it was May 9th, Victory Day Parade, which I attended in its aura. It was very interesting, to say the least, but I enjoyed it. So, continuing through this little village, avoid the sabakas and circumnavigate uh, this Ron really wants to say hello uh, circumnavigate the village down here I've only seen people driving around in their cars I haven't seen actually anybody walking around apart from the uh, people doing work on other people's houses so yeah see you got completed neglected and inhabited dachas already so oh soviet green special type of green you only get in this part of the world or a former soviet nation leave step ah oh, yeah so that bus goes all the way to kaliningrad is my ticket out of here 
So thankfully, from fort number nine, oh, look at this house, this is nice. Fort number nine, which is just down that road, the bus just went down, is my ticket home to the center. So I suppose here is where they're doing work. Oh, there's some people here. A block of flats being done. And hey ho presto, we're here. So down here is the elusive fort number nine. If we continued going that way, we would make it to fort number 10. Even though they're quite close to each other, we're just gonna do number nine today. So be very, very easy to circumnavigate. Uh, there's a bus, oh, I think that's like the last bus stop for this bus number. First things first, I need to find a bin to get rid of this can of uh, solar power, which is starting to go through me. <laughs> like anything. I don't even want to, I can't even read any of this. I don't even want to know how much caffeine's in this. Let's just say, a doctor would advise you not to drink this. Well, that was the most disgusting portal loose I've ever used in my life. So right next to the bin, thought I'll use the toilet, but if you saw what I saw, you'd run a mile. Oh my God, <laughs> no way. This is amazing. This guy really loves Freddie Mercury and the crown. Unbelievable. Who would have thought you'd find that out here in the sticks in Russia? So, after seeing the Freddie Mercury house, go down here and take a splendid right, we shall be at Fort Number 9. Oh look, you can still see it from here. So, very interesting what you can find out here. So, there's a dog. There's another dog. There's more dogs. It's amazing what you can find out here. Like the most random stuff in the most random places. You know, for uh, such a gay icon, he really is popular in this part of the world. Out here. So we gotta keep heading towards the fort. <clears throat> There's a little bunker. Could be a house, could be a station, who knows? Yeah, I'll tell you what, when these places have, a lot of these um, derelict ones, I reckon when they're finished, they'll actually be really, really nice. And obviously you'll kit them out however way you wish. That one's got a nice garden, nice patch of green space. Grow your veg, raise some farm animals, some chickens, goats, whatever. This is a very sleepy dog. Oh, this is a very nice one here. Hmm. We've got some walled off ones here, more modern ones. So, if we come up to the signs here, it should be down here. Which means the journey should be coming to this arduous journey coming to an end because the back of my foot, my left foot feels horrible. Because I, did, uh, I didn't cut it, it's like I kind of shredded it while I was in the Philippines. Well, you can see that gate behind me, you just walk straight through. So I believe this is a vegetable plantation where they grow vegetables, like in a giant allotment where you can grow vegetables and obviously buy them straight from the source at a wholesaler's price. So if you look around here, it should be up here. Ugh. So what, when I get back to cleaning ground, I'm going to get back to the flat, change my socks, 
throw my trousers in the wash because they are caped in mud and so forth. Mm-hmm. Just need a I believe this what I'm standing on right now, despite all the vegetals and the greenhouse, this is what remains of the fort number nine. So they built greenhouses on the fort. What the hell? Eh? Oh, good grief. I guess I'm in the wrong place. Well, looks like fort number nine is not cracked up what it is. It's literally just a load of greenhouses. I suppose there are parts of the forts you can see, but I'm gonna have to find them first. So, turns out there is no fort number nine. It's literally just a vegetable plantation, as I discovered. So it was a bit awkward walking around there being a, not a worker or a customer. So, obviously, did the sensible thing and left. And the lady, or the, the maitre d', or the whoever's in charge, told me, yeah, it's, uh, there's no fort here, yet. So, uh, heading back into Kaliningrad now. I mean, fort number 10, I could do today, but it's a 47 minute walk. It's, it's just not worth it. Unless I get myself a Yandex or something, but I think at this point, I'm just gonna go straight back into town. <laughs> So, that concludes my adventure into the countryside and discovering two forts. One completely abandoned, but small and the other one, not abandoned, and growing veggies. So now, I'm back in the city of Leningrad. Not too far from where my flat is. So right now I'm gonna go home, recharge my batteries, and um, get ready for the afternoon activities. So I'll see you then soon.